Um, well, there have been many versions out there of the singularity, of the technological singularity, um, and various variations of definitions of thought. So for me, the technological singularity is um, technology which increases at an accelerating pace such that in finite time we have some technologically related quantity going to infinity. Yeah? So it could be, and that's a standard scenario, um, processing time, computer processing time, yeah? um, or memory, or both probably. Yeah? Um, Hansen would say sort of um, the GDP maybe goes to infinity. Yeah? This is also singularity. And these things are closely related, you know, if GDP goes, or if the processing speed goes to infinity, maybe you have infinite um, inventions per finite time, and then GDP maybe goes to infinity. So, I mean, they are related, and David Chalmers in his article sort of nicely um, works that out, um, this correlation between quantities, and if one quantity goes to infinity, then intelligence will probably also go to infinity. Um, that's, for me, the singularity, and then there's various degrees how... Um, strict you are about the singularity. Some think, you know, a hundredfold or thousandfold um, increase in intelligence or processing power, whatever, you know, is all in, in very short time, you know, it's like a singularity, you know. Others really want something to go to infinity, yeah. Others are fine that um, maybe if we convert the whole planet Earth to compotronium, you know, it is 10 to the 50, I think, operations per second per kilogram or something like that, yeah, and which is ridiculously higher than, you know, current computing density, you know, that's for all practical purposes, you know, that's close to singularity, yeah. Um, I'm leaning towards um, a more strict interpretation of the singularity that we really have something which is extremely close to a mathematical singularity, maybe similar to black holes. Even black holes, because of quantum mechanics, they are not strict singularities, yeah, but I mean, it's close enough. So I have talked about the technological singularity now, yeah, and um, most associated with an intelligence explosion. Yeah, then I would call it maybe intelligence singularity. And I. G. Good wrote about it um, in the in the sixties already. That um, if once we have achieved um, human level AI or slightly beyond, these systems will be even more intelligent systems, and um, it should go up at a very high rate. And it was actually Ray Solomonov has the most convincing or quantitative argument why it should um, be hyperbolic, so um, it should go to infinity in finite time, because he argues that we have Moore's law now for 50 years or even longer in a certain sense, yeah, and um, maybe it holds even longer. And once we achieve human level AI, then these systems will, of course, I mean, Moore's law is not a um, law of physics, I mean, it holds because we design better and better computers because, you know, we do the research and, and the engineering, but then these computers will take over, these intelligences, but if their speed doubles, yeah, so Moore's law holds because we have a certain speed in developing new technologies, but if they are twice as fast, you know, they will have these inventions done in half the time, so they will only need one year to double the speed, and they will then invent in half a year the technology to double the speed and then a quarter of a year and that adds up to a finite number and in finite time you have infinite um, computation time so that's Solomonov's law and well I still haven't talked about intelligence but only about um, speed um, I think if you want a, a, necess a necessary condition for having infinite intelligence whatever that exactly is is have infinite computation power. So we need this explosion of computation power in order for intelligence to explore. Explode. Think just about finite amount of computational resources. Yes, you can have better or worse programs and at some point you have exploded, exploited everything you can do and you can't do better with this hardware, right? And then intelligence is limited by this hardware. So we need this explosion of speed. Yeah? Speed alone is most likely not sufficient for an increased intelligence. Yeah? Faster, yeah, appears to be then more intelligence. I mean, think about Einstein, you know, being 100 times faster, he would have invented, you know, his theories, you know, at an enormous pace, and we would say, wow, that is amazing, yeah? Um, 
But um, ultimately, say a dog is not just faster than a worm, but somehow really more intelligent. And I mean, humans, we are I mean, we are slower than dog in certain senses, yeah. But we are or believed to be more intelligent than a dog, yeah. And there should be a next step, which is really more intelligent rather than faster. And how that works? Well, through better algorithms. Yeah? And of course, we design algorithms with humans, and the AIs will then also design themselves even better algorithms. So we will have an improvement in algorithms. Yeah? An interesting question is, um, you know, maybe that is upper limited too. Yeah? So, I mean, physics tells us there are limits actually to computation speed. Yeah? So uh, this hyperbolic growth at some point will stop here at the computronium, but I mean, that's far away, so that it's okay to talk about singularity in speed, but maybe intelligence is upper bounded. Yeah? And I even have a theory in Axie, which is the most intelligent agent, so this is an upper bound on intelligence. So maybe that prevents a technological singularity. Look, we have this system, you can't be more intelligent than this, that's it. But there are also counter arguments. Um, where you can argue that even if you have sort of these mathematical limits, uh, let's say it's 2985 chess would be yellow or something like that, you have this number, but getting closer and closer to this number, even if it's only fractions, you know, numerically it seems not like a great advance, yeah, but maybe that's all the difference it makes, you know, maybe if some agent is just a tiny bit more intelligent on this numerical scale, yeah, it will have an enormous difference, it makes an enormous difference in impact on the real world or the virtual world. So now let's assume that there will be a technological singularity in the future and um, a very interesting question is of course you know how will this singularity look like or how will it look like close before the singularity and I mean this is a very very hard question it's um, yeah, the analogy to black holes is um, clear, um, but maybe it's not completely hopeless. So, I mean, of course, it will most likely depend on how we set things up, you know, we, we get it started, yeah, and um, it evolves in a certain way, and if we start differently, maybe it evolves in, in different direction. But if we start, say, with a society of intelligent agents which interact with each other, so similar to the human society, then um, there will be virtual resources, uh, namely memory and computation time, and even with increasing um, computer power, they will be scarce. And so these agents will fight about these resources, uh, or cooperate, yeah, but both will be there. So, um, and if the agents can change over time, so develop, yeah? and those who are better able to acquire computational resources, they will survive, they will spread, and soon you will have a society um, which fights over these limited resources, you know, much like the um, real evolution works like. Um, so in this sense, um, the detailed initial conditions are not so relevant for predicting how the society will ultimately look like. And maybe at the singularity we will have a society of axes because you know they are the most intelligent ones, they should be the ones which are best able to um, acquire computational resources. So and we have the axis model already now, so we could already now with mathematical tools try to study how a society of axes look like and you know maybe a singularity is a society of axes, so that means we would study the singularity.